everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Lauren and today I'm going to be showing you how to prevent puckering on garments when you're using your embroidery machine. So a lady left me a comment on one of my other videos asking how do I prevent puckering and I thought I'd do a little video to demonstrate how I do that. I have some examples of embroidery in front of me. Uh, this one is on a nice plush hoodie and then I've got some embroidery on t-shirts as well. The t-shirts are a lighter material and you can actually see that some of them have quite a bit of puckering on them. These were two test samples that I did and this video is going to be about how I prevent puckering in the future what I need to do differently to get better results. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna show a stitch out, or, or rather a redo of this design so you can see how the things I talk about in this video work in practice. So in this video, first of all, I'm gonna talk about why does puckering occur and how it, then I'm gonna talk about digitizing, then I'm gonna talk about what you can do to prevent puckering, via the physical things you use to embroider with. And then lastly, we're gonna be talking about other troubleshooting factors, such as um, tensions on your embroidery machine. So first of all, we're gonna look at how or why does puckering generally occur. Puckering occurs because the embroidery thread you're using to stitch your designs out is usually stronger than the material the design is being stitched onto. And this causes the material to dissolve, which results in these like lumpy bits you can see around the edges of the embroidery design. Usually the less stable the fabric, so the lighter the fabric is, like t-shirt fabric or stretchy lycra, the more likely it is puckering will occur in comparison to say a heavier fabric like this hoodie. And this is why it's important to choose the correct stabiliser for the garment you're embroidering onto, as choosing the correct stabiliser will help prevent movement in the material. The second most common cause of puckering is the incorrect hooping of the garment. Regardless of whether you're using the correct stabiliser or not, if you overstretch your material in the embroidery hoop, when it snaps back into position when you remove the garment from the hoop, you will have some sort of puckering because it's returning to its original position. And the third reason for puckering, and one you might not necessarily initially associate with puckering, is upper thread tensions. The most popular thread used today is uh, polyester thread. This is a poly neon thread I bought from Madeira Embroidery Threads. Polyester threads are generally quite popular because they tend to be more durable than the rayon thread. Uh, polyester doesn't fade as much over time and it's also much more durable, which means it doesn't break as often in the embroidery machine. And while you might think, oh great, a thread that doesn't break as much, that's great, uh, that strength is actually also its biggest weakness because it doesn't alert you as much to issues with tension within your embroidery machine. Uh, if anything, you actually want your thread to break when there's a problem, so you know that there's uh, a tension issue with the machine that needs to be corrected. If the top thread tension is too high, the pull on your fabric becomes greater the faster your embroidery machine stitches. And a rayon thread will snap, but the polyester thread won't snap. And because that polyester thread won't snap, it creates friction between the thread and the needle, which in turn creates heat, causing the thread to stretch, and that then creates puckering in your material. So if you're using a polyester thread over a rayon thread, it's worth bearing that in mind, and you can try slowing your embroidery machine down a little bit, or reducing the top tension to see if that helps prevent puckering. The next thing we're gonna talk about is digitizing, because that does have uh, an influence on whether your design is gonna pucker on the material as well. I know a lot of people purchase their embroidery designs online, so this might not be as relevant to you, but for those who make their own embroidery designs using a digitizing software like Embird or Hatch, uh, it's worth bearing in mind that digitizing does have a big role to play when preventing puckering in your garments. Most good digitizing softwares actually have an option to select what fabric you're stitching onto, and then depending on what fabric you select, the software will then choose the appropriate underlay to support that design. As a general rule, the more stable the fabric is, the less underlay is required. So if you stitching onto a material like denim, you're not going to need a lot of underlay to support the design. Whereas if you're um, stitching onto a knitted material, for example, 
you're going to need more underlay to lift that design up and support it. When digitizing, choosing the correct underlay is really important because it promotes good design registration when you're stitching the design out. It also prevents gapping and helps to prevent puckering. So after you've looked at your digitizing, we're now going to talk about the physical things you can do to prevent puckering in your machine embroidery. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you never embroider onto anything without a piece of backing material behind it supporting the garment and the design. Backing material is also referred to as stabilizer. Stabilizer is just a piece of non-woven material that sits behind your fabric in the embroidery hoop and its purpose is to prevent the fabric from shifting about. Stabilizers are available in all different backing weights and as a general rule, as the fabric weight decreases, the weight of the stabilizer should increase. When you're looking at purchasing stabilizers online, there are all different kinds of weights available and generally the weight is expressed in grams per meter and this is referring to the backing's density, not its thickness. So now you know that you need backing material, but which backing material do you need for your project? There are absolutely tons of stabilizers available out there, but generally they fall into two categories. The first category is tearaway, which as its name suggests, it tears. Tearaway is the backing of choice for most embroiderers using stable fabrics like denim or sweatshirts. Because tearaway stabilizer, <laughs> because tearaway stabilizer makes removing the stabilizer from the back of the garment faster. It's also cheaper, and generally, it's safer to remove tearaway from a garment than it is with the scissors. But I'll be speaking a little bit more on that uh, in a short time, uh, because I had an incident with tearaway the other day. Um, the second type of stabilizer is cutaway stabilizer. Now, this doesn't tear. It's very thick compared to tearaway stabilizer. You can get some quite thick tearaways as well, but cutaways generally are that little bit thicker again than the tearaway. People prefer to use cutaway stabilizer over tearaway stabilizer on lighter fabrics and stretchy fabrics. And generally when you're embroidering a design that's quite dense onto a stretchy material, and this is because cutaway backings tend to have more bulk to them than tearaways and are more resistant to needle punctures through the material. So choosing the right stabilizer is key to the success of your embroidery, um, but they both have certain little drawbacks. As I mentioned, cutaway, you have to cut it out with the scissors and sometimes you can actually snip the material with your scissors. Also, on when it's even if you sort of cut around the design, so for example, if you cut around all of these little shapes and stars, there'll still be some kind of border or cutaway backing, and that will sometimes show through your garment, particularly if it is a light garment with a t-shirt. So I generally tend to favour using the tearaway stabiliser on all my garments, even though the rule is if it's something you wear, you do not tear. I still prefer to use tearaway stabilizer because of how easy it is to remove and because it doesn't show through the material. That being said, if you are embroidering on a light garment like a t-shirt, be mindful that when you're tearing it away, don't be too violent, <laughs> don't manhandle your garment, you want to be really gentle with it because you might actually rip the material. Uh, this star isn't meant to be there because I actually ripped a hole in the t-shirt when I was ripping off my tearaway. So lesson learned, I'm still gonna use tearaway on all of my um, garment projects, but just be careful. As a general all-purpose stabilizer for garments and other projects, I usually recommend uh, a medium to heavyweight tearaway because I find it quite versatile. If you use, if you're embroidering on t-shirts or sweatshirts or making patches on felt, uh, two layers, sometimes even three, if, if it's quite a, a thin material like this t-shirt of tearaway stabilizer, and I find that works pretty well. But sometimes you have to be a little bit sensible. Not all embroidery designs will work on the material you intend to stitch onto. For example, if I wanted to stitch this um, Save the Bees design onto a lightweight t-shirt, you will find you'll have some puckering around the edge where the satin stitch is going down. So sometimes the style of the design isn't suitable for the fabric you're stitching onto. 
that I could stitch this design onto a heavier weight material like this hoodie and not have any puckering. But if you do buy a design with a high density stitch count and you are determined to embroider it onto a lighter material, then it will be better to go for a more dense cutaway back in. This is due to the fact that there'll be a lot of close needle punctures into the material and the back end. If you were to use a tearaway stabiliser, this would weaken the back end more quickly. But with a heavier cutaway stabiliser, it's not affected as much because the heavier cutaway will retain its strength. At this point, I decided to try and remake my t-shirt. On the original shirt I made, I only used one layer of a lightweight tearaway stabiliser. The final results weren't too dreadful, but I did feel I could have done a little better. So this time I decided to use two layers of a medium tearaway stabiliser. Like I said, I prefer using tearaway over cutaway for garments because it doesn't show through the material after stitching. After placing the bottom of the hoop inside the garment, I like to smooth the material out over the hoop to get rid of any creases. This also provides a more even surface to embroider on. I prefer to use magnetic hoops over traditional hoops because they clamp into place really easily and don't leave any hoop burn on the material. Also, using magnetic hoops, there's no need to adjust the hoop and that makes it easier to properly hoop the garment. I'd apply the same process when hooping a garment with a standard hoop. If the hoop isn't adjusted correctly, it can sometimes lead to the material being loose inside the hoop. If the material is loose or there are increases inside the hoop, don't be tempted to hoop it up and then try and pull the material taut around the edges of the hoop. If you do this, you'll end up stretching the material. And then once the design has been embroidered onto the garment and you take the t-shirt out of the hoop, you'll find that the material snaps back into its original shape and that'll lead to puckering around the design. If the material is creased inside the hoop, it's better to just take the hoop apart and start again and make sure that the material is taut like a drum without having to stretch it. This is the end result of my embroidery stitch out on two layers of cutaway stabiliser with the machine running at 600 stitches per minute as opposed to 800 stitches per minute which is what I usually run the machine at. I very carefully removed the tearaway stabiliser from the back of the garment. I didn't want a repeat of last time where I ripped a hole in the back of the t-shirt so I removed the layers one at a time. The t-shirt is made out of a very light material, so I did expect a little bit of puckering around the design, but fortunately the preventative measures I took really helped reduce the puckering, and I'm happy with the end result. To this video, I'm just going to say that puckering can be caused by a number of or a combination of factors, and those factors are bad digitising or using the wrong underlay for the material you're stitching onto, using the wrong stabiliser for the design or the type of fabric you're stitching onto, hooping fabric incorrectly or stretching the material inside the hoop so when it springs back into shape that creates puckering around the design and lastly if your top thread tension is too high for the material you're stitching onto. And out of all of these four points personally I'd say choosing the correct stabiliser is the most important. You can double up on stabiliser to create a better platform to embroider onto. Uh, I'd say you can use as many as three layers of stabiliser, but I wouldn't recommend using more than three layers. If you're using more than three layers, it's better you just buy a thicker stabiliser. Okay, so I think that about covers everything. I am going to make another video on stabilizers, go in more in depth on different types of stabilizers and how they work for different sorts of materials. 
including some topping material as well as the backing material. So if you'd like to see that video and also more of my content on how I run my embroidery business from home, please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comment section below and I'll answer them as soon as possible. And if you've been following my channel for a little while, you might have heard me mention the laser cutter, which is this machine I bought from China many, many months ago. Well, it is finally in the UK and I've actually been given a date for delivery. So really looking forward to that. And yeah, I just hope you guys are excited about that as I am. So I'll see you then. Bye bye. <laughs>